Hey audience, let me ask you a question. Who has it worse in dating, men or women? The odds are that if you're a woman watching this video, you're, you're, you're absolutely sure that women have it worse by far. And if you're a guy watching this video, then you're dead certain that the women are wrong and guys have it far worse. The reality is that but you know, both genders really do suffer in the dating world in very different ways. And this video today is about helping you to understand the ways in which men and women suffer differently uh, that I've noticed as a dating coach. Because when you do understand that, you can actually make some changes to the way you interact with men and women to suddenly become, to stand out from the crowd and suddenly become a far more valuable man or woman um, that men and women are going to want to get to know because you won't be making the mistakes that everyone else is. So first of all, let's look at how women suffer in dating world. You know, now one of the things many guys say is that, you know what, women have it so easy because women don't have to make the first move. You know, men just walk up to them, women get to sit around minding their own business and just wait for men to come to them. How easy can that be? But what guys often don't realize is that the men who approach women, the men who actually walk up to women in a bar, or the men who walk up to women during the daytime, they're normally not the best kind of guys who are doing it. Because the guys who have the guts to approach women at nighttime in a bar are usually the sleazy, drunk, drugged up, um, um, you know, player type. That's who is approaching women at nighttime. So if women, you know, don't get to approach men, they only get to choose from who approaches them, you know, for once, just go out and ask women what kind of guys are approaching you. Because I'll tell you right now, it's really not. It's like the sleazy guys no woman wants to meet. So her options in man are really, really limited to who approaches her. And as I think many guys watching this will kind of note, yeah, you know, the, the nice guys, the, the, the good guys are often not courageous enough to make that first step. Another way in which women really, really suffer in dating land is men almost never make clear what they want. I mean, it's, it's insane. The number of times that guys will go up to a girl, uh, start talking to her, and he'll act as though he wants a relationship where he just wants casual sex, you know? Or if a woman asks him, what do you want from me? A guy will give this really kind of vague, well, you know, I kind of wouldn't mind, you know, a relationship. I kind of wouldn't mind something sexual, you know, I'm just going with the flow. This really vague answer, and, and women have no clue what he wants. And the result of this is that for a woman who wants to find a relationship, it is really, really hard to find a guy who, who to know what a guy wants because the guys who just want to sleep with you are, are being indirect and pretending as though they want a relationship with you. Um, the guys who want a relationship with you, you can't tell the difference between them and the guys who just want to shag you. You know, it's as though, it, it, you know, put the shoe on the other foot. For a woman, it's like, it's, 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 imagine as a guy that every woman you meet or most women you meet or a large volume of women you meet tell you they want a relationship with you, but they really want your money. And, and, and trust me, the, the whole gold digger thing, not many women are actually like this. But imagine that a huge number of women were like this and that you had no way of knowing the difference between a woman who liked you and a woman who just wanted free meals. It, it would drive you insane. It would drive you bonkers. And yet this is basically the conundrum that women face all of the time. Now, guys, this is something that, that I really, that you need to change, um, that, that would drastically make you stand up for women. And when I do this, it has a huge impact. And that is, I make clear to women what I want from them. Now, you don't have to be sleazy to do that. Uh, you know, when I was, I was uh, single last year for about six months, and uh, when I was talking to women, I would often say, you know, I, I, I haven't been out of a relationship very long. You know, and I'm really enjoying being single. You know, not 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 to sort of like shag as many women as possible or anything like that, but I'm just enjoying being single to um, get to know who I am, to be selfish, to not have to worry about anyone else, and and sort of just enjoy enjoy me. You know, when you're in a relationship, you get so crushed, and you, your sense of self gets changed and merged with the other person. So I'm really enjoying that space right now. But you know, in the meantime, I'd love to meet someone who, like a woman who I click with, who's fun to be around, who's interesting to hang out with who, I guess in a similar space, isn't looking for anything too serious at the moment. Now, when I say that, I'm making clear I don't want a relationship. I'm making clear I'm just out of one. I'm enjoying being single. And I do let her know, hey, I'd like to find a woman I actually like who also isn't looking for something too serious. But there was nothing sleazy. It's not like it just said, yeah, look, I'm hoping to find casual sex. <laughs> um, that's too, it's too, it's too uh, brash. 
You know, it's, you know, you don't want to be rude or sleazy or brash, but at the same time, be clear about what you want. And you have no idea how many women in response say to me, you know, I really respect that you're so honest. I really like that. Or that you're so upfront. It's really refreshing. And the amount of times women will say to me, you know, I kind of am in the same space myself. Uh, you know, not always. Sometimes women will say, okay, well, I'm looking for a relationship, so this isn't going to work. And that's fine. I respect that. And she can go on her way. I can go on my way. But making clear to women what you want, finding a way to be clear about that, it really makes you stand out. It's a really powerful thing to do as a man. The other area where women suffer massively is men, on the whole, have no clue about intimacy, closeness, rapport. Um, men are actually really, really bad at creating the environment, the emotional environment women need to want to be sexual, whether that's casual sex, a one night stand, or a relationship. Men are horrendous at romance. They, they, they don't understand that. Um, and if you, even if it's just casual, even if it's not serious, women want to feel special. They want to feel romanced. It's, they need that in their very core. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like if every woman you met had no idea what sex was. <laughs> you know, if every woman you met had no idea what sex was, that's what it's like for women because men just have no clue. That it's something that we need to learn. If, if, if you can meet a woman and you can make her feel romanced, you can make her feel special, you can make her feel like she's uniquely important to you. Most women don't take the time to do that. And that doesn't take a lot of time. It just takes a little bit of thinking. It takes a little bit of understanding. And the last big area that women really suffer is um, around sex and, and slut shaming and, and how women should feel about their sexuality. And this is a really big one. Actually, men and women both suffer around how they should feel about their sexuality, but it's different between the genders. You see, for a woman, a woman has to double guess everything she does if, if it could be interpreted sexually. So just to think about how does what I'm wearing affect how men are going to think of me or women are going to think of me or people are going to judge me? What does, what does it mean if I, if I uh, go to his place for a movie? What does it mean if I don't? What does it mean if I don't kiss a guy? What does it mean if I do kiss a guy? What does it, I mean, women feel so harshly judged about their sexuality and, and exploring their sex drive and exploring what they like and don't like around guys. You know, it's, it's such a popular cultural thing to make women feel bad about being sexual. And that, that puts a massive strain on women around relationships because it makes it really hard to know what the right thing is to do. Is For men, we just don't have to think about that kind of thing because we, we simply don't get judged in the same way. The end result for women is that, you know, it, it is much easier. Yes, it's much easier for a woman to get into a relationship than it is for a guy. You know, many guys can be single for six months straight, whereas a woman could get in a relationship quite easily if she wanted to. But the difficulty is this. I think I would rather be single for six months than get into a relationship with a guy who doesn't actually like me, who doesn't actually want a relationship, who's just looking for the sex, who's kind of lying and deceiving most of the way through that relationship because he's unable to make clear what he wants. So at the end of that relationship, I feel foolish and my whole sense of trust in men is eroded because I've had this guy who's been lying to me and deceiving me the whole way through. Um, and so this ends with massive heartbreak at the end of six months where I, I have to question everything about what I thought about myself and guys. Now, I know this happens to men too, but to women, this is way, way more common. As someone who's worked with both men and women, this happens all the time to women. And I think I'd rather be single than have to go through that. So that's something worth considering. Now, before women think, well, obviously, see, Damien even said it, women have it worse than guys. It's not true. Guys have our own struggles as well. Women often wonder where all the good guys are at. You know, the, 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 the decent men, they're going to treat them right. Seems like the world is full of sleazy guys. But the reality is that the world is full of really great men. Trust me, I work with them day in and day out. But the problem is that what most men experience, the majority of men, the unseen men experience, is a huge amount of shame. Shame for being a man with sexual urges. Um, men feel ashamed of, of, they feel scared of talking to a woman and letting her know he's interested in her because he's sure that she's going to think he's sleazy. He's sure that she's going to think he's a, he's a horrible human being. Um, it's, it might sound ridiculous to you, but that's what we feel as men because... First of all, in the media, we see nothing but man shaming. And, you know, I, I know why it's there. There is a huge, there's a decent sized number of men out there who are sexually aggressive, sleazy, make women feel uncomfortable. I know that's there and, and I know that it's a problem that needs to be dealt with. But it's actually not the majority of men. The majority of men aren't like that. But 
what the majority of men end up seeing is that society tries to use shame. They try to shame the men who behave badly into behaving correctly. And shame is a terrible weapon. We should never make, you know, you can't curb someone's behavior and make it better by making them feel ashamed. Um, so all men see is this shame directed at them for, for being men, for their sexual urges, for all this kind of stuff, that they never, shame doesn't inspire us to learn how to, um, to understand the difference between, you know, approaching a woman saying, hey, I, I think you're really cute. I wanted to say hello. And walking up to a woman and saying, hey, baby, you're hot. Want to fuck? Um, we don't actually know, we're not taught, we're not educated, we're not shown in any way by society that there's a difference. You know, all we're told is don't pester women. We're not told don't be rude and sexually aggressive, but by all means, if you like a girl, let her know because women like that. We're not, men don't receive that message. So, so many guys go through the world feeling just outright ashamed for being interested in a girl because somehow that's supposed to be sleazy, which as a woman, of course, you know, is ridiculous, but that's that's what we that's what we feel. It's like the male version where women get oppressed for, for expressing their sexuality. Men just feel ashamed of having it in the first place. So many men feel that way. Another area where I, I, women actually really don't realize how difficult it is for guys is that for the average guy to, to find one woman who's interested in him, because guys have to make the first move, your average guy probably has to get rejected, like outright rejected, maybe 10, 15 times. <laughs> um, women just don't ever need to perceive or be aware of this volume of rejection. They don't have to deal with it, handle it, or manage it emotionally. Um, and, and that's a very difficult thing for, for guys who aren't emotionally disconnected, guys who feel hurt or feel sad if they get rejected, which is totally normal and human, by the way. Um, you know, if, 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 you get, if I talk to a girl and, and she says, and she makes me feel stupid for hitting on her, she uh, makes me feel like I'm nothing or like I'm dirt, um, if I'm, I'm a very confident guy, but most guys aren't as confident as me, that can really hurt and that can be really hard. Um, and so when we're expected to get rejected 10, 15 times to find one woman who likes us, that's really hard. And that makes dating difficult. That makes dating a little bit traumatic for guys. And that's why so many guys are left alone. And alone, I think, is a really important thing because it leads me to the, to the next era where men really, really suffer. And I think a lot of men watching might not even be 100% aware of this themselves, but this is huge. Um, when a woman feels lonely, or a woman feels like she has no value for the world, or a woman feels like, like no man could possibly be interested in her, most women have a good supportive network of friends around them that they can open up and talk to about that. You know, it's, it's rare that a woman doesn't have people that they can share these emotions and turmoils with. But most men have nobody. So if, if, if a man like myself feels lonely, depressed, sad, insecure, I feel like, if I feel like I have nothing to offer with the women in the world, there's nobody that I can turn to. Um, um, well, I do personally, but, but most men don't. They've got nobody. So they have to deal with this loneliness alone. There's no way, there's no one to turn to to feel better that women have and men don't. And that makes it really difficult because it makes it much harder to recover from emotional um, like breakups and, and, and rejections and things like that. It's very, very hard, the world that we live in. And this, you could blame men on the whole, but I, I think it's society because society that we live in doesn't give men an emotional outlet. It doesn't teach men that it's okay to express, to be sad, to be depressed, to, to be all these things. We, that's just the world that we live in right now. And, and that's a way in which men really do it tougher. Men truly, truly, really struggle. So here's the key to anyone watching. If you're a man or a woman and you really want to stand out from the crowd. You really want to be seen as, as different from all the other men and women out there. If you actually understand what the opposite gender suffers with and where they struggle, and you can make them feel understood and, and let them know that you get it and that you care, and you can not make the same mistakes that everyone else of your gender is making, you can really stand out. You know, if I, if I go up, if I start talking to a woman and I'm not sleazy or aggressive, I'm just, I, I make clear what I want, where I'm at. Um, you know, I make her feel okay. I'm, I, I make her feel comfortable um, that I'm not going to judge her sexually one way or another, no matter what she does, says, dresses. If she, if she uh, is sexually forward or, or sexually shy or sexually, you know, wants to take her time, that she won't be judged. <laughs> that it's all okay. Um, if, if I build rapport with her and make her, uh, let her know what I uniquely like about her, what makes her special to me, and I can make her laugh and it's, I'm fun to be around, I am, I, I am such a rare gem in her world. And I don't mean I'm special. I just mean from her perspective, most men don't do that. That's such a hard thing to find. 
And so if men and women understood this and applied this in their dating lives, uh, they'd meet a much higher quality partner because they would be a much higher quality partner for someone. So that's my thoughts on this area. I'd love to know what you think. Are there real struggles that you believe men and women have that I haven't mentioned yet? You know, I'd love to see it in the comments below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my three weekly videos. I look forward to seeing you next time. Hey guys, do you get frustrated approaching women and then getting rejected? I'd like to invite you to my free 12 video training series where I'm gonna show you how to make such an amazing first impression before you even say a word that rejection will soon become a thing of the past. See that button down there? Don't procrastinate anymore. Go ahead and click on it and I look forward to working with you.